friends. It's I, your half-assed, half-assed, half-assed reporter, James Com, the guy on the bike. And we're back in Chelsea. We're going to try to take a run in here to pace and take a look at an exhibition by Julian Schnabel. Stay tuned. So this is Julian's latest show and it's titled Bouquet of Mistakes. Okay, we'll do our cursory sweep here. Okay, this is titled Glimpse 2022 Oil Gesso Modeling Paste and Bleach on Velvet in Artist's Frame. It's 97 by 79. Well, as I said, I've been looking at Julian's work for a long time and uh, it's always interesting to bop in and see what's going on. Well, they're also calling these <clears throat> velvet paintings, which has also been a uh, material that uh, Julian has used for many years. This is titled The Nine Skies in Mountain Fortress 5, 2023, Oil Bleach on Velvet in Artist's Frame. Well, as I said, I've been looking at Julian's work for a long time. Uh, I got to New York in January 5th. 1979, I was going to school at the Art Students League. Okay, and they're calling these artists frames. But I don't think uh, Julian carved these. Probably had some great technicians cast them. That's what it looks like to me. Anyway, um, so maybe the first time I went to Soho, I was wandering around down there. I didn't know where the heck Soho was or what it was. And also we've got some uh, sections there collaged on. Anyway, I uh, happened to walk into this little gallery on the ground floor at 420 West Broadway. Little did I know it was Mary Boone's gallery. And uh, I think I saw maybe Julian's first show there. Uh, it stuck with me and I think one of the paintings, I believe it was Saint Sebastian, kind of uh, stuck with me for a long time. It's titled The Nine Skies in Mountain Fortress One. Okay, so they're saying that a lot of this has been bleached. Again, we're 97 by 79, so we're talking uh, Eight by six and a half feet. Okay, this is a big one, multi panel. This 
So this is the title piece of the show, titled Brunel Awake for Jean Claude Carrier or Bouquet of Mistakes. Oil spray paint modeling paste gesso on velvet. It's 168 by 330 inches. <laughs> I will just say that that is big. And right off the bat, I would say it's probably about hmm, 16, 17 feet high and uh, gosh, I don't know, 30 feet long. Well, as I said, I think Julian is, for me, is kind of a signpost about when I got to New York. I also was able to uh, watch his ascent in the art world. There was a whole period of time when, uh, gosh, Julian and Mary Boone and David Sally and a couple of other people were on the cover of all the fashion magazines and New Yorker, New York Times, and all that stuff. It's also uh, kind of interesting to see the way that Julian has um, used his color blocks as the uh, the foundation for these. And also, uh, I think one of the things that some people have remarked about is the fact that uh, Julian often uses found things, found fabric, plates, uh, truck tarps, things like that, maps to paint on. Oh gosh, we've already got some crackle in there. The Nine Skies in the Mountain Fortress 4. Blah, 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 blah. Artist frame. It's also uh, worth noting that I guess in the last couple of years that Julian has been using these various frame devices more, and I think part of that is that, um, you know, puts your, your objects into a realm of painting. A lot of these are so mixed media and so forth that maybe you need a little constraint. Okay, also I'm looking at this and thinking that uh, uh, Julian probably takes sheets or rags or something and soaks them in paint and then kind of like throws them down here onto the canvas. Okay, I get it. It's like all three of these have some kind of a, uh, it's like a little tower on top of a, an outcropping in an ocean. This is fortress number two. I guess it was a couple of years ago I was watching David Lynch's 
kind of a rehash on uh, Twin Peaks. And it starts out with a couple of his weird characters in black and white in some kind of tower, some surreal world somewhere. And then somehow Agent Cooper, <laughs> his soul gets kicked out and sent back to Earth somehow. Anyway, uh... Yeah, so... I've liked Julian's work for a long time. I think that, uh... In certain ways, he has been... He's a, kind of writing both ends of the spectrum, where... On one side, he may be... one of the most overrated artists of his generation. On the other side, he might be one of the most underrated artists of his generation. It's kind of writing this weird edge between those two things. And uh, I think probably 10 or 12 years ago, I did read a I think it was by Rudy Fox, one of the great European curators. I think he's curated Documenta and maybe the Venice Biennial. And he said something to the effect that, uh, I guess he might have been curating Documenta in 1986 or 87, and everybody's saying, well, you got to put Julian Schnabel in, and he didn't put him in because he thought that uh, that somehow he didn't deserve it. There was just too much celebrity uh, glamour and market hype that was involved with it. And then uh, he said, after a few years, he realized, no, that uh, Julian did deserve to be in there. And well, I agree. As I said, I think I first saw his paintings in 1979. And uh, there was a great show that was curated by Raphael and Heather Rubenstein that was on this summer, maybe one of the best shows in town. Although I could be prejudiced. Okay, this is Fortress Six. And, uh, well, they had an early Julian piece. I think it was 1976, which is by far the earliest Julian piece that I've ever seen. Maybe we'll splice a little view of that in here. Shoe shine for Vittorio di Sical. 1978, oil wax and modeling paste on canvas. So that was my first exposure to uh, some interesting uh, paradigm shifting painting. It's kind of the beginning of what became Neo-Expressionism. And there was a whole period of about seven or eight years when Mary Boone, Julian, David Solly, Eric Fischel, gosh, a whole bunch of people down there associated with the gallery were on top of the world. Okay, so it is strange that uh, so this was even before the broken plate paintings, but uh, Julian was still doing these odd things with things sticking out.
This is Lauren Monk. The Ontology of Art Study One. 2016. Well, I will only say one word. Yes. One of the things that uh, Julian has always maintained is the scale. And uh, I think there's also kind of a extravagant gesturalism in a lot of these pieces. Yeah, the works on display in Schnabel's upcoming show were made in concert with the preparation for a seventh feature film, In the Hand of Dante, an ad adaption of Nick Toshi's novel of the same name. I think we came by and saw Julian's show that was about um, rose gardens, and that was in relationship with his William Defoe movie about Van Gogh, or Van Gogh. I think also one of the interesting things is that Julian can have these paintings that are totally gestural, abstract, splashy action painting kind of things. And then he's got uh, other pieces where he kind of throws in these strange Figurative things. This is almost like some kind of a Byzantine icon image with the face with the halo. Also, I think the other interesting thing is that, um, well, Julian has got his own kind of end of the art world. He's got Vito, who's got one of the more interesting, uh, chic, if I can use that word, galleries a couple blocks away from here. I always try to pop in and see what's going on at Vito's, some of the most interesting shows I've seen recently. This is Hannibal crossing the Alps. Okay. And again, I wonder what, uh, I wonder what Julian's mixing in his paint to get it to get him all crackly like that. I also remember seeing an article, this is back in the early 80s, where Julian actually was able to go down and spend some time with Clifford Still. And in certain ways, I think that uh, Clifford Still might be one of the people that has inspired his scale, his exuberance with the paint. So this has been James Com. Reporting on Julian Schnabel, bouquet of mistakes here at Pace. You can like this, share, link it up to all your social media sites, and you can subscribe. You can click the little bell symbol up there, 
And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, suggestions, and reviews below. Just as long as you say thank you, Kate. Oh, thank you.